The market is seeing a very slight correction today. It went up to 72,000 and then right back down. But I think it's fair to say that we're still seeing some explosive growth and a number of altcoins outperforming. We've seen a rotation from AI to memes to RWA tokens, but some coins continue to just show major strength no matter what happens. And I think we can all agree that we're in a bull market regardless of what happens today or on any given day. We're going to take a look at some alpha, some charts using trading alpha, try to find some good trades. Let's go. That's dope. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. I've been talking so much and doing so many podcasts and such today that I'm actually losing my voice slightly. Kind of crazy. But yeah, I'm still looking at this market, loving it, seeing a ton of opportunity. Of course, today is Wednesday, which means it's our weekly show, Trading Alpha. I've got Wick here, man. How you how you feeling about this market today? That was a pretty crazy move up to about 72 today before it dropped quickly, I guess we'll say on the Coinbase news, although whatever. Yep, man, a lot of a lot of volatility. And, uh, you know, that's what this market's meant to do is meant to try and shake you out of positions. But, you know, we know better. We've got uh, the tools to make sure we don't get shaken out. And, you know, I'm ready to run through them. Yeah. And speaking of those tools, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, obviously, the show is called Trading Alpha. The tools are called Trading Alpha. It's the indicator suite that Wick himself created, as I've told you many times tested it forever. He told me I need to use it forever. I've probably missed out on making millions of dollars because I didn't listen to him. But now it is I use it. Wick, you didn't even see, but Monday I just showed up at uh, like 3.30 p.m. same time and did a chart stream and just ran through trading alpha setups like for 30 minutes by myself. Very nice. proud you, would have, you would have been proud of me. You would have been <laughs> proud of me. You would have been proud of me. By the way, I see before I let you go, I see one question here at the very beginning which says, hey, Scott Wick, any chance of Opal? I've got the monthly alpha bundle, but need to save up for the yearly. Would love to see Opal has green dots. Setup looks nice. I actually just brought it up for him while we were talking, and I would say that Opulus is green dots on every time frame. When's uh, weekly, daily, 12-hour, 6-hour, 4-hour, 1-hour. You're looking pretty good there, buddy. So uh, that was my uh, quick take at looking at that for you. Now, obviously, we'll uh, run through the charts you guys requested on uh, X and, and let Wick have the uh, stage. You know, I actually saw that guy request that chart, and now you, that you pulled it up just a minute ago, I actually regretting I didn't pull it up because I saw stage two breakouts almost on every time frame there. So it looks good. Yeah. Let's start with uh, Coinbase, right? All the all the fud that's happening. Okay, so um, you know, pretty simple. We got a stage two breakouts, right? You got a retest of the track line. For those of you that have been following us, the first setup is the breakout of stage two. The next one you have, the next setup is when it tests the track line and you have a green dot reaction. This would have been your second setup. And yet we're still holding green dots, but look how far we are away from the track line. So this morning's volatility, whether it was news or FUD or whatever, doesn't really bother me. Um, if we have a pullback or not, this thing is still bullish. It's still in stage two, and I'm very bullish on Coinbase. I mean, how can you not be? Um, me, I'm following the charts more than the news, and everything looks good on the side. So if you guys are in Coinbase, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, you can see that we did have a pullback from this little breakouts and, uh, you know, still holding green dots. So I'm not worried at all. OK, so I just wanted to start with that because I know that was part of the news this morning. I actually have been away from the markets today. So, um, yeah, did you did you have something, Scott? No. Yeah, no, I was just uh, just uh, agreeing. OK, so let's move on to Bitcoin. I'm going to run through these. I do have some great setups at the end here for you guys that are happening right now, especially in BCH and these two coins here. I know that Scott's talked about Sui this morning. Uh, let's move on to uh, Bitcoin. OK, so Bitcoin here, you know, this is pretty much what moves the whole market. So you always want to watch Bitcoin and make sure that we're not turning bearish. Right. We're not going into bearish market, which I don't think will happen for at least another year, in my honest opinion. But, you know, that's why we follow the charts and don't guess. Uh, right now we're having green dots. And if you guys remember on the last show that we had last week, um, I mentioned that I think we're probably just going to go into a range, a temporary range. And that's kind of what we've done, right? We've ranged and we're kind of just showing green dots in a range, which is called bullish 
consolidation. Okay. So this is where you just be patient. This is what I tweeted this morning. Just be patient. It's almost preset. In my opinion, this thing will see higher prices. We're simply just waiting for a close above the all time highs. And I think that's when we'll make our next leg. Okay. I think it's just taking a bit of a breather because as you can see, it's been on a terrific run, but it's not over. Green dots are still printing. And I think this market is uh, poised to just go higher. We're again, just waiting for a breakout above here. And if you are looking to get into Bitcoin, there are people that are not in Bitcoin yet. I don't know how you've missed this, but if you're not in Bitcoin <laughs> yet, uh, yeah, um, don't worry because when you close at all time highs, that's one of the most bullish setups that you can have in technical analysis. Everyone gets scared when that happens, right? Because you're right at all time highs. But again, a close on the weekly above this line right here. And it's of my opinion that it's go time again. So that would be your setup if you're not in Bitcoin yet. And once you get into Bitcoin, as we do as usual, once you're in these stage twos, you simply just hold as long as it prints green dots. Even when it has this big fake out here, you know, you, if it's printing green dots, don't get out. That's the... A lot of the power of our system. And you can see here on the last cycle, it's exactly what happened. We had a squeeze breakout arrow above our stage two gray line. And then you just follow the dots, right? No matter what happened, you didn't listen to everyone on Twitter. You didn't you know, shake yourself out. And also another tip that I have for you guys, right? You got to decide your trade plan ahead of time. And that means deciding your position sizing. Okay, once you've done that, right, and you're watching the charts, in my opinion, what I do is I don't look at my PL. If you want to get shaken out in crypto in the most volatile asset, uh, in the most volatile market, look at your PL. That's one way to get shaken out. Me, all I do is follow the chart. Okay, so Bitcoin's looking good. I'm going to go and switch now from the weekly chart to the four hour chart of iBit shares. Okay, this is BlackRock's ETF. Hey, wait, gotta, sorry to interrupt. I just because I'm realizing some people are asking on Twitter where they can't see the description. Tillian says, Hey, Scott, how do I get the trading alpha? It's in the description on YouTube. And I actually just, when you said that, I went and tweeted it underneath this video on uh, Twitter or X. And just so I didn't tell you guys before, that link is down in the uh, comments. And this is the only place you can get 25 off by using code 25OFF. Sorry. I just want to make sure they see that since it's uh, they're not watching on YouTube. Yeah, hundred percent. And listen, guys, please. Um, I, I so after Scott's show, I have a bunch of people writing me after they sign up, saying, "Hey, I forgot to put in the two twenty-five off code." So once you check out, right, and you're about to actually, you know, uh, uh, get it and subscribe during checkout on the left-hand side is when you put in that twenty-five off code two five. OFF that'll drop the price substantially. And it's a bit of a headache if you guys don't put in that code beforehand. So make sure you do that. Um, we've never run a sale of 25% this long. It's usually two to three times a year. One of those times is Black Friday. And only because of Scott, this is happening on an extended basis. So go grab it right now. But please make sure that you put in that 25% off code um, you know, before you actually pay for it. Okay. Cool. Moving on here, four hour chart. When we broke above these lines here, I drew these lines and this was our stage two breakout. Okay. So I've been, I caught this move. In fact, I think I caught it. That's right. I caught it right here. This is where I, where I got into my position. Okay. Breaking out into stage two, green dots all the way. Again, this is the power of our system. You're not going to find this anywhere else. The green dots stop right here. So this would have been your cue to take all of these profits. Okay. In trading, you might have left a little bit on the table, whether you did or got back in, that's okay. But what I'm seeing now that I kind of like right here, to me on the four hour chart, this is a double bottom that is confirming right on the track line to me. And then you get your green dot, which is a sign of strength off of this double bottom to me, okay? Even though it hit twice right there, I, con I consider this on the four hour chart, a double bottom confirmed with a sign of strength, the green dot. So for me, this is a, this is a long position and I know it's pulled back. Uh, but th this type of position, I was talking to somebody and I said, okay, well, how would you set this up? You would get in on the green dots. You would take your stop loss, in my opinion. And again, this is not financial advice. I'm just trying to educate you guys on how I trade. I would set my stop loss right below those wicks. And that way you have a little bit, you know, a short little risk over here. But I do think this is a good setup. Um, a better setup if you want a higher probability, if you wanted to be a little bit more patient, of course, would be a close above these highs right here. And again, uh, this is BlackRock. Uh, you know, I'm assuming that's not gonna stop for quite a while. Um, and also I'll give you guys another piece of uh, kind of alpha here. Uh, you know, when BlackRock announced that we we're gonna get in this ETF, that's when all the big institutions, uh, you know, try to get in positions. And these guys normally try to hold a year to avoid 40% cap gains tax. And in my opinion, that was around, you know, 
um, January right here. So I, that's why I'm thinking on my basis that this goes at least one year, but most likely longer. But if you want to be a safe bet with institutions, they have to hold for a year or they try to hold for a year to get that 20% cap gains tax instead of 40%. But again, a close above here would be another setup. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, so I mean, I totally agree. And I interestingly, if you look at that as a double bottom there, uh, you have the breakout, but then you actually almost got a retest of the neckline, maybe slightly above, but on that last wick two candles ago. So like, yep. uh, yeah, right there in the middle, uh, like right on, I'm, I'm pointing at your thing like an idiot. Um, <laughs> what a moron. Uh, yeah, so one second, uh, I'll have to just do it on my chart and I can show you. But this is how like I would view that. Uh, generally, you know, you get, like you said, that's the candle where you confirm the double bottom. So if we put a line here, I mean, you almost got a retest right there. So that's a lot of traders like to take the retest of the neckline, you know, you're talking about within a couple 20 cents. So yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. hundred percent. And a, a retest of the neckline, right? If we do get another green dot, you know, that would be another potential setup. So it's all setups right here. Again, on the double bottom green dot, that is a setup in my opinion, you stay long. Uh, or if they print another green dot from the retest of the neckline, okay, from uh, TA, that's a very, very good indication. Moving on here, let me just, uh, there you go. Let's move on to Doge. Doge is one that, you know, everyone's been talking about. So it's been getting a lot of free publicity. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about Elon thinks he's going to make, make it the coin uh, to transact in space. Uh, that's kind of the narrative with Doge. I think it stopped being a, um, a, a meme coin and that's kind of its, its promise, right? Or at least what we're hoping. But this is breaking out, guys, into a stage two. Stage two uptrends are really easy. Again, you switch to the weekly chart. And you simply just ride the green dots and avoid all of this volatility and you don't get shaken out, right? Um, of course, always set a stop loss, right? So if you have a pain point, make sure you put it on there. And another tip that I have for you guys, if, if you're going to sleep at night and a position is down and you're losing sleep, it doesn't mean your stop loss is bad. It means your position sizing is too big. Okay, so to keep that as another form of alpha. But this looks really, really good. Stage two uptrend. Doge is meant to be volatile. You're always going to have selling, selling pressure because they still view this as a meme coin, even though it's got more promise. But this is a stage two breakout. And in a minute, we'll go over the stages. And I'll explain to you, for those of you that don't know about my setups on stage two. Moving on to my favorite coin. I got to talk about this every time that we're on this show because I get so excited about this and I think it does have some of the most promising potential. So um, I first uh, got in this when I was hearing Rob Powell talk about this. And uh, for those of you that don't know who he is, he's probably one of the best macro economists. He used to work for hedge funds um, with some of my buddies. And that's all they do is they tell the funds what they think is happening on a macro scale. And then what happens is the funds then go looking for the technical analysts like myself to confirm the thesis from the, the economist. So me and Raul, uh, this works perfectly, right? And as you see, it's broken out from stage one, part one, which was right here above this broken out in this line here is stage two part two which is still in progress and look at this it's held green dots all throughout the way right and look how far it is away from the track line okay that shows you the the relative strength and even during that correction right and i think again scott got in on this one here but even in that deep correction which we, which we just had it still wasn't able to pull back to the track line okay so what i'm saying is is i think that once we close above this area over here, for those of you that are not in Solana, if you're thinking about going in Solana on your own accord, um, I think this might be a really great high probability setup. Wait for a close above here. But in my honest opinion, I, you know, I think this has, you know, I, I'm not going to say, but I, I, I think conservatively, at least another 5x to go if this bull market continues. Okay. And then another setup after that would simply be it close above all-time highs like we always like, right? Remember, everyone that gets scared at all-time highs when it goes above all-time highs, that's the wrong attitude, right? That's the most bullish scenario is up here. But I know a lot of you are trying to get in. And once you get in, just make sure you're riding with the green dots. And until they stop, don't take your position off the table, okay? Scott, you got anything about Solana? I agree. I mean, I think you're at 1000 bucks. So, hey, why not? I've said it before. <laughs> and for those of you that, uh, that want to know, sorry. Sorry, Scott. No, that's it. Saying five, six X from here. I agree with you. So yeah. yeah, yeah, and it is my biggest bag. So I'm not just talking TA. My money's where my mouth is, and I haven't pulled my cash off the table, and I don't plan to do that for at least until December or longer. Switching to FET, this is another setup that we've been uh, posting uh, or, or talking about on the show for quite a while now. This has the AI narrative behind it. So if you are trying to catch 
um, you know, positions with the AR narrative in mind, thinking that's going to go on for a couple of years. FET's one of your most promising bets, okay? And, and as you can see, the relative strength, again, looking at the track line uh, relative to where the price action is, it's just taken off, right? And even in the pullbacks, it doesn't come anywhere close to the track line. That's how you know something is just really relatively strong. And as you can see, our stage two basing breaking out. And, you know, we're still holding green dots. And now I think this is a good time for me to just go over what I'm talking about with stage two basings. Okay. So what I'm talking about is normally in a cycle, you will have a stage one basing pattern, which is just a consolidation that goes sideways. Okay. We see this after the bear market, after the bear market, everything likes to base. And this is healthy. You want it to base in here for quite a while. I do not like buying stage ones because basings can go on for days, months, weeks. I've even seen them go on for years. But what it does do, if you can define the base, is you can look at that resistance and wait for it to break out of that resistance, which would be your stage two. Looking at this chart right here, it's very clear to see. This is your stage one basing pattern. You even have your bottom signal right there. Okay, if we, if we scroll... <laughs> If we scroll this a little bit to the left, you can see our bottom signal right here. Okay, this shows our bottoms and we wait for a green dot afterwards, but this normally happens in stage one. Another thing to identify stage one, if you do have our tools, is looking for the green and red dots to go above and below the track line and have green and red dots like a Christmas tree. We're not looking for setups here, but that does identify, help us identify both stage one and later on stage three. But let's first go into stage two. This is your stage two breakout. This is the Mecca. This is what everyone should be aiming to catch as a trader. You have your stage two, and this is your bull market. After your bull market starts to kind of top out, you'll get a chance to exit. This will be your stage three basing pattern. A lot of times I like to take 50% profit at stage three basing. How do you identify stage three basing? Well, it's going to do the same thing as stage one. You're going to see the price action going above and below the track plan, oscillating with green and red dots. That's your signal to kind of, you know, Take some profits off the table, especially if you've gotten in something like this, right? After stage three comes your bear market. I also like to trade bear markets, but it's not for uh, people that aren't seasoned because price action falls a lot faster than it climbs, okay? But this is your general cycle. So if you ever see me talking about stage two, this is what I'm trying to catch. I don't trade anything but stage two. And if I can catch it, if I'm lucky enough, your stage four downtrend, okay? Which is the same thing with... Uh, that we do with green dots, except it's red dots, right? So on Bitcoin, if we look at Bitcoin, this was your stage four downtrend, okay? We had one green dot there, but our rule, if you want to get into it, is one stage four starts, you don't get in long unless it breaks above the track line. This all could have been avoided, okay? So it's not just the long upside that you get with our tools. It's also avoiding all the downside and taking care of the profits that you earned, okay? That's the biggest thing is taking profits in, in, in crypto is the biggest issue that I don't think is talked about enough, okay? And that's your stage four downtrends that we want to, um, we want to uh, make sure that we avoid. If we're not trading, we surely want to get out of it. So I talked about taking 50% profit in stage three. You would simply set a stop loss for the rest of your position. You would get taken out of it when we start to go in the bear market and you would just sit on the sidelines, right? That's when the cycle is over, in my opinion, okay? Or at least that's how it's played out the last four cycles, okay? Getting back to this coin now that you know what stage two is, holding green dots, baby. We're trying to catch that stage two uptrend. This is the only time you want to catch longs. Never, never in any other part of the cycle. Moving on to Sui. Scott's talked about this all day today, all right? What do you see? Well, I, I see blue sky breakout, which is what, exactly what you keep talking about. I have it. Uh, let me Beautiful. pull it up on, on here. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you've got it right there. Everybody can see it. i pull it up. I had it up on the other chart. Uh, very clear here, obviously, guys. My yep, look at that. You got slow. squeeze breakout right, to the upside. Here, here was your, here was your uh, all-time high, basically 197. You have, this, uh, you have this basically a cup and handle, right? Big cup, handle, and breakout above all-time high. Blue skies. Down day, and I was telling people this at $1.97 this morning in the newsletter. So this is continuing up massively, even though everything else is sort of having a minor correction. You know, Scott gives you guys such alpha. You know, I, I've been looking at this, and obviously I'm just riding for green dots. I didn't even realize how beautiful this looks. I mean, this is a cup and handle. There's your cup, there's your handle, and here is your confirmation. Okay, so this is an actual valid setup, right? So like 
this week, this is a setup that you should be contemplating, right? But always have risk management, set your stop losses. If I had to set a stop, I'd probably set it below some of these wicks. And then as it goes and you have a little pivot point, and then I'd move it up, right? That's how I kind of manage my stop losses. Every time we start going up, we have a big correction and then come back out of it. I move my stop loss up just below that correction, okay? But yes, this is a valid setup and great, great catch, Scott. Uh, still holding green dots on the stage two breakout that I just explained. Moving on to SEI. Scott, can you do me a favor? How do you pronounce this? Dude, I don't know. I've heard people <laughs> say C and I've heard people say say. Exactly, right? So Scott and I were say. talking about this. I, this say. is why I asked him. We, we were just, just debating this. I don't know how to pronounce this. If anyone knows, just let us know. But we feel that this pretty much moves in tandem with SUI because they have such similar names. Sometimes it can be as simple as that in these bull markets because there's just so much liquidity sloshing around. Okay. But as you can see here, you know, I don't make this stuff up. Here's clearly your stage one basing. We don't have green dots because there's not enough data to get the dots, but our macro signals are red. We do draw this stage one basing pattern, identifying this consolidation, breaking above it. You do get a strength arrow right there. Strength arrow after it goes up, comes and retests that line, you get a green dot. This for me would be the entry, not right here, but on here on this move, maybe a close of this. This is your entry into stage two. And then what do we do? We just hold as long as there's green dots and in all this volatility, right? This is what is the value of our system because that's what you need in a volatile market like this, right? Um, and definitely don't try and trade any of these charts on the lower time frames, please. If this looks like this on the weekly, can you imagine what this looks like on the 15 minute chart? <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to one that I've been very interested in. I'll be honest. I've been, I've been in this um, as a hedge because for, uh, for those of you that don't know the story about Craig Wright, uh, nobody likes this guy. <laughs> okay. He's an enemy of Bitcoin, uh, but it's pretty funky what's happening with the courts and some of the wallets. There's been some conspiracy theories. I won't get into it, uh, but we have been watching this. We did get our squeeze shading. When you see this shading right here, it lets you know that a volatile move is coming or an extreme move is coming. It could be to the downside or it could be to the upside, but this is your warning to pay attention, okay? As we're looking at this, we do see that we have green macro trend bars, okay? So the bars show you the trend on a macro scale. The dots show you the trend on a micro scale, but this happened just before the squeeze shading. And if that wasn't enough, we did get our breakout arrow to the upside, okay? So this has started. If I didn't draw the label here, this is your stage two breakout line, okay? Comes back, tries to retest the track line. This again is always a setup that we talk about. Once we get a little correction and it retests the track line and gives you a green dot, that's another setup. And what do we see? We see that it's trying to close at a uh, local cycle high, okay? So this is a very bullish setup as well. Um, I don't like to promote be a, a Bitcoin cash too much because it is the enemy of Bitcoin, but you know, whatever makes and you cash is in a stage two. Yeah. It's, Mark, I mean, I'm a trader, you know, I, uh, what can I say? Yeah. Mark wants to know, do the dots show up on candle open or close? You, I could tell him that you answer. Yeah, no. So that's a great question. We get this uh, a lot because, uh, you know, everyone wants to know when does it show up? Cause if it showed up right after the candle closed, that doesn't really help you that much. Right. Would I make a system like that, Scott? I don't think so. Right. The dots show up live as the candle is printing once it crosses a threshold. So that way you have time to get in the move and it's not no fake system. Okay. So no, the dots do not close on the, uh, do not print on the close. They print as the candle is forming. And that's pretty much all I have for you, for you guys today. Unless you've got some other charts that you guys want me to I look at. I'm I just want to show one thing really quick because it ju just kind of as a, as a lesson, right? We talked about, uh, I'm going to call it say, Talked about say right. It ha, uh, has this rounding bottom to me, right? You see it enter the market, rounding bottom, breakout, heads up. Suika, rounding bottom, heads of the market. Now it's just kind of getting to that point where it's getting that breakout. Well, one of the biggest trades I ever had that I shared a bajillion times in the last cycle, after actually already making like a 200x on it, when Elrond became Eagled. I showed you guys I had the same thing. We got in at 10 bucks, right? We're here when it was breaking, and it mm. continued on to to uh way higher 500 544 dollars right I so remember. look at that you know look at that and that's effectively what you're seeing with both of these charts and that's the beauty of these new tokens that don't have selling pressure and huge bag holders you know they just have no supply overhead and once they go it's price discovery i'm not saying those are going to go from 10 bucks to 544 a relative move but that's what those charts both look like huge rounding yeah. bottoms on the entry and then break out. 
you know, they, pre they present emotion. If you guys want to know how technical analysis works, a lot of it presents emotion and a lot of these uh, patterns will rhyme. And, and Scott's very right. Those rounding bottoms are a very big sign, especially when you're, you know, approaching the having, right? So, I mean, this stuff is, 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 is pretty good, Scott. That, you got some great setups. I was really impressed by that uh, cup and handle setup, Scott. So I think that's great. Just to review here, Old guys, <laughs> I think that BCH is a good setup right now. Um, I think that FET is a strong one. Uh, obviously Solana, and then keep keep uh, keep up with Doge because if they keep talking about Doge, uh, this is going to pop a lot higher, right? If we if we scale back here, we've definitely got a lot of room to run. Okay, and they, there you can see it as well. Red candles escaping all of this downside. What is this, guys? This is a stage for downtrend, just like I've been talking. So those are your setups for me, Scott. I don't know what you got. Love it. I just want to mention, guys. Fet has been like the performer of this market, obviously, alongside like the souls and uh, renders. But today, if you're wondering why it's also massively up, there was news that Fet, Ocean, and AG AGIX are going to merge, which I've never heard of. So what? three projects are going to merge into one token. They're all three crypto AI projects. Apparently, I don't even know what the mechanics are, but if it's approved, the projects will merge their tokens into one. That's been uh, driving that massive move to the wow. upside there wow. so that's kind of crazy and i think the other two obviously have been uh, mooning on that news too riding the sort of fetch hype so no that's that's all i got once again guys this was all trading alpha all the same indicator system we're all using it shardy's using it everybody is using it has been effectively making money it's really amazing uh and so you can get that 25 percent off there's a link in the description it's on twitter below the video and on youtube click the link as he said on the left side, 25 off to get the to get the thing. Yeah, please yeah. put that in there. And one more thing I'll say for, for the followers here. Um, I was surprised to see a lot of our uh, followers in the Discord. By the way, guys, um, I'm in my Discord every single day. You know, if people have questions, they can tag me. So that's also part of the value you get with Trading Alpha. Jump in my Discord. Make sure you don't forget about that if you do get the Alpha bundle. And one more point of value, I did not realize that a lot of people don't know that you can set, you can, um, set alerts for these dots, right? Or anything, the squeeze breakouts, the squeeze shading, the break cut arrow the dots these are all set by alerts just right click on your profile and go click add alert and we've got them all set up there for you so you don't have to watch the chart every minute of the day i didn't realize people didn't understand this but please make use of those alerts because it's the best way to trade you can send them to your phone to your apple iwatch and that's the best way to make sure you don't miss these moves but uh thank you scott for uh, everything and having me on here man i appreciate that Love it, guys. Thank you so much. That is all we got. I'll be back, obviously, tomorrow morning with a Don Yago, one of my favorites uh, from Sovereign. Dude's just an amazing, amazing speaker. Hey, I think South African like you, actually. Uh oh, really? Yeah, we got a whole crew of you guys out here. All right, guys, that's all I got. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Wick. Bye, yeah, guys. You're Bye. That's dope.